Welcome to another episode of The Financially Free Investor, where you will learn information and strategies on how to become financially independent by investing in real estate, something that is not taught openly in our society today. Financial freedom matters so you can live a bigger life, retire early, and do what matters most to you. Get ready to hear tried and true methods to becoming financially free with your host, Jordy Clark. All right, everyone, welcome into another episode of the Financially Free Investor. I've got a buddy of mine here today, uh, Jamie Gruber, and super excited. So Jamie, why don't we jump right into who you are? Maybe give us a two or three minute background on who's Jamie Gruber. Yeah, man. No, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be one of the cool kids we talked about before we started recording here. So I'm a cool kid. Uh, let's see. So I like to call myself a recovering W2 guy. I'm a native New Yorker by way of Boston, now in Michigan. All of that was moving around and climbing the ranks of a corporation from you know line level employee to executive. Uh, and I did that. I pushed hard for 20 years from the age of 21 right to the age of 42. And along the way, found this sort of separation of my identity and true being from the job I was doing. I guess another way of putting it is I was doing a job for an outcome, but I wasn't doing a job or doing something in my life that felt aligned and fulfilling for me. Uh, and I had that break as I approached my 40th birthday. And um, yeah, it, it ended up leading me down the path of real estate investing, course creation, coaching, all of that good stuff. Uh, which all of which serves me so much more than any anything I ever did in the insurance claims world. Uh, and yeah, at 42 years old, this is a year ago as we record this, I was able to walk away from my job and uh, we've been living a very fun life ever since. Fulfilling, fun, lots of travel, all that great stuff. And I have no complaints whatsoever. Retired at 42, right? When most of our adult or lives growing up, I guess, we're taught, hey, go to school, get a good job. You yeah. know, you work until you're 65, right? That's the magic number that we've all been sold. And and here you are, you're 20 something years younger than that. You actually have the health to be able to go do whatever you want, you know, and, and because you've built up some passive income, you can afford to do it. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And what's funny is, you know, I, I think there's a fallacy of this idea of like, you know, hey, you're going to make enough money where you won't do anything. There's a question of not having to do anything versus not do anything. I think the idea that you're going to retire, as you put it, and go sit on a beach and sit my ties is like a three year fan, a three day fantasy. After three days, most people, any sense of achievement, are going to want to figure out what they're going to do next. If I won the lotto, if I won 400 million in the Powerball, yeah, I'd have some fun for a bit, but at some point, I'm going to want to figure out what I want to do. So to your point, yeah, building up some passive income, building up wealth, uh, understanding that you can build businesses or real estate portfolios that can pay you. Well, so you don't have to do anything. I'll be honest with you. The most jarring and most fulfilling thing for me is I do work and the stuff I do, I just love. I absolutely love what I do. Whereas before it wasn't the process. It wasn't the journey. It was the result. And now I love the journey that I'm on and the result. They just, it just seems to come faster and with more result, with better results, I guess you could say than I ever thought I could by just being in tune with who I am and what I do. Man, that's so good. Yeah. And I'm sure that's going to resonate with a lot of people, right? I mean, I speak with just tons of people who are like, man, I, I like my job, but you know, I don't really like it, right? In my opinion, I, I don't really want to live a okay life, right? I want to just be 100% happy with everything I'm doing. And you know, if it doesn't check those boxes for me, then it doesn't make sense, right? And it sounds like it's the same for you, which is... Yeah. 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 I was going to say, it's like with anything you, you hit it on the head, man. Like the job for some reason is the one thing that we've accepted the idea that mediocre is like success somehow. Right. My marriage was mediocre and blah. And I was grinding through it to one day. I don't know what die with my wife. Like, so we we're in the same grave site. Like that just sounds sad. Right. Or if my kids if my goal with my kids was to kind of have a relationship with them or hope that they, you know, like, ah, as long as, as long as they're okay, not thriving, I don't want them to thrive. I just want them to be okay enough so that one day they can go do something else. Like that just sounds so heavy and sad to me, but with jobs, with work, with the things we do somewhere, like you said, through school, conditioning, fear, risk, whatever it might be that we, that we have. We do these jobs, we do this stuff with the for the bulk of our time, and we are accepting of the fact that I have to do it this way in order to have this result of retiring at 65 and, and all the things you talked about. It really 
And I look, I'm, I'm one of those folks for 20 years. I was one of those folks, right? Like, well, no, it's good enough. I, I like what I do. I can find joy in the fringes of what I do. Like maybe it's not in my case, insurance claims, but I like the leadership aspect. I like the relationship building part or whatever. And that sounds great. And I think that's, I, I hear that people respond to me on Instagram a lot on with things like that. Like, but I like what I do. It's like, great, great. I'm glad like is the thing that you're, you're defending, but I like what I do. Why would I, why would I get rid of like, because somewhere out there is love somewhere out there is, I can't not, you know, like for me, look, podcasting, what you're doing now, being a podcast host, love it. I love it. Does it directly pay me? I mean, little bit, right? Like I don't make big sponsorship dollars off of podcasts, but the ability to have reach, the ability to influence, to leave a mark, legacy, the things that are important to me to, to influence others. And then, yeah, there's money that comes to me through different means, selling courses, selling memberships, whatever it might be, right? Like, but just doing that, I don't care what I get because it just comes because I'm fully aligned with something that serves me. I love it. I absolutely love podcasting, but we'll sit in a job, man, for decades, liking it and justifying to the world and to ourselves that, well, that's enough. Like is enough. I like my wife. I like my kids. I like my life. I like my vacations. I like my car, man. Like I, I just, all of that, everyone would agree. It sounds a little crazy. No, I want to love my vacation. I want to love my kid. I want to love my wife or husband. Right. But with a job, we're okay with like, it, it, it blows my mind. And it's something that just for me, and I think it happens to a lot of people as they approach 40, for me, it got to a breaking point of saying, I, I can't, I can't stand like anymore. Like like is not enough for me anymore. And I've I've taken a chance on love and it's it's ridiculous how when you click in and you're fully aligned how much comes to you. So yeah, that's been yeah. that's been my journey. Ah, that's so good. So may, maybe let's go a little bit deeper. I have two questions. First is when do you remember where you were or or what? Maybe it was a book that just led you to this idea of financial freedom or financial independence. And then the second question is, you mentioned something just barely where, you know, you kind of hit that breaking point. So maybe go deeper on those two, two points. Yeah, I'll give you three, three points on a timeline that I think answers both those questions. The book is easy. It was a book. It was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Read it at 21. Oh, that's nice. Read it at 37. Like, oh, oh okay. Now I get it, right? Like there's a whole different way to be. And that really started the intentional, uh, me being intentional about, you know, finding assets versus liabilities, me being intentional about who I surrounded myself with leading me to go abundance and all everything else like that. So if I had a point to a moment, it was like 37, 36, somewhere in that range, still living in Boston at the time, crack this book open again. Don't know why God, the universe, who knows what made me open this book. It's not like somebody gave it to me. I just opened it and read it again. And it just like, it was like, like light shining out of it. Like, Oh, you know, just, Oh my God, it just made so much sense. So that was point one. I start down the path of personal development. I, I buy my first uh, couple of duplexes. Later, it's a, a multifamily, a second multifamily. And I've gone from there. And right? it's kind of been my path. The second part was my 40th birthday. It was uh, October 1st of 2018. And I went to a conference, like a, a personal development retreat in Montreal. And it was deep. You know, we, we st three days, you're getting to know these people. You're really, you know, there's a lot of mindset work, kind of what you described uh, before we started recording of what you did. Uh, recently at a mastermind event that you went to, right? Like it wasn't just here's information. It was like a, uh, an emotional experience, right? And at the end of it, I drove from Montreal back to Michigan through Boston. Don't ask me why, but that's another story, but made this long, long drive and didn't fly for some reason. And on that drive, I just had time to process, you know, what happened. And it's just me in the road, nobody else in the car, right? Like 15, 18 hours in a car. And on that drive, I remember the song Secrets by One Republic. If you don't know the song, I need another story, something to get off my chest. My life is kind of boring, right? That, those are the lyrics. I would listen to that on repeat unknowingly kind of for like six hours, right? It just, it was going and going and going. And I just broke. I just, I remember calling my coach at the time in tears and it was like, man, what, what have I been doing my whole life? You know, what, 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 what is this? What, what version of me am I? And so it went from, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad a couple of years earlier. I started getting intentional and building toward, you know, being around a community of people that meant something to me and doing things that were, that were going to allow me some level of financial freedom to having that break and realizing, wow, I have not been living authentically. I have not been living in a way that, that represents truly who I am. That, that kid at six or 15 that has a dream to be just got watered down and he came back at 40. So at 40 years old, I have that breakdown. 
And then flash forward, flash forward, I should say, two years later, interestingly enough, in a car again, driving to Florida, now for a month with my family, now that I've gone through so much work, that 40th birthday breakdown led to so many breakthroughs. And one of my visions was to travel from with my family for a month at a time to a destination of our choosing. And we were doing it February of 2020, 2021, February, 2021. We were driving to Florida. I was driving to Florida. My wife and kids flew, I had a bunch of toys and the dogs, right? So I drove everything down. And same thing after the first day of listening to podcasts and making phone calls, there's only so much of that you can do, at least for me, before like day two, two and a half, I'm just sort of in my head, same thing, open road, nowhere to go. The, the power of being quiet and letting your brain just sort of decomp and clear the clutter and dig deep into the recesses of it and find the things that are, that are really not serving you or find the things that truly are who you are. That drive gave me that clarity to say, you know what, it's time to quit. And I'll be honest with you, I believe this wholeheartedly. I was 99.9% .9 of the way to quitting. I was there. And that sounds big, 99.9%. .9%. But what I've learned is that 99.9% .9 from zero takes effort. It takes time, but it's about half the distance from 99.9 .9 to 100. And what I mean by that is, I look, a, a fighter pilot doesn't fire when they're 99.9% .9 locked in on their target, right? They are 100% locked in. The movie Top Gun, you can picture, right? Like deadlock, boom, then they fire, right? Like all great things happen when you hit 100% commitment on anything, not 99.9, but 100. And for me, that tick over to 100 on that drive was the mindset work I did there, reflecting on all that I had done, my, my passive income, where it was, all of that stuff. I had that all in my brain. And then a dear friend ended up passing. Uh, the, uh, while I was on that drive, I got a call about a guy passing. It's my age, two young kids or whatever. And that just that was one of those moments, maybe you've had it, where you know exactly what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, it's time to leave this job. It's time to stake out on my own. It's time to claim kind of who I am again and do what I think is best for me and my family and just live authentically, not only for me, but so that I could display that for my kids who I'm teaching these concepts that I've learned. But I wasn't at that point truly living into the idea of you can do and be anything you want to. So those are the three points on the uh, uh, like timeline points, if you will, that got me. I think your two questions were uh, what started it. And um, do you remember a point where where it all kind of went? It was the book, the 40 year old drive and then the drive last year. Uh, those quiet times really allowed my brain to work and get me fully committed. That's so good. And just thinking like that happened relatively quickly, right? So you read Very the book good. at 37 yeah. and all of a sudden fast forward seven years and you're to the point where, you know, during those seven years, I'm sure if someone was on, on the outside looking in, you know, not much didn't change with Jamie. He's not driving a Ferrari because all of a sudden he bought a duplex, right? Yeah. I'm yep. sure you just continued living modestly, bought another duplex, kind of let the cash flow accumulate. You bought another one and just kept moving up, right? Where- yep. A lot of times that's where we don't give ourselves enough credit for just taking action. You know, the first property is the hardest one. The second mm -hmm. one gets easier and it gets a little bit easier each time, but then we get stuck in our heads. And I'm sure that happened to you on that journey. Yet, if you think about it, seven years really isn't that long because the story we've been sold is, you know, as soon as you're out of college, we'll call it 21, mm -hmm. then you're going to work for the next 44 years until you're 65. Yep. And, and you might have enough money if you save away in your 401k to yeah. be able to retire or, you know, maybe not work or, you know, I mean, you could go do something else for part-time income, but that's, you know, when social security kicks in. So you were able to collapse 45 years of a life or just financial life, at least into seven. Mm. And then, you know, that point where you're like, that's it, I'm done. Dude, that gave me goosebumps. Yeah, so. no. And to be honest, it was closer to five, like 37 to 42 is probably the, the timeline. And now we're, we're working on year six now. But to your point, all of that sounds uh, uh, really good, right? On a timeline, you no know, bought up duplex, like you said, everything. But it's amazing how in five years or six years or whatever it is, I mean, you know, I, if I look at any other period of my life that was five years, it doesn't matter when college, high school. I mean, other than maybe times I can't remember, like the age of one to six, where you're just obviously growing tremendously naturally. Right. But I can't there's no other time in my life that I went from uh, as engrossed and embedded in what I was and what I was doing to a completely different life. And along the way, to your point about having doubts, having those things kind of creep up. For me, the intentionality of finding people that when you go to those dark places, because you will, of I'm not enough, imposter syndrome, oh my God, I'm over my head, whatever, 
you get around the right people who are there to kind of, you know, maybe shed more of a light on what exactly your mind is doing to you right now, or give you the evidence of your past that serves the future version of you or whatever, that also gives you, in my opinion, it compresses time for you. So in that five years, while I'm acquiring real estate, I mean, I'm also starting a business, I'm partnering with this person. I mean, there's just so much happening. I'm actually amazed at how much has happened in five years. You know what I mean? Like, it sounds like a long time when you, when you just say five years, if I said, Hey, uh, yeah, I'll get back to you in five years. That sounds like, wow, five years is forever. But if I said, um, well, hey, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that you have you know, 40 units of real estate, you don't have a job, you're traveling 75 days a year with your family, uh, and you can live wherever you want, whenever you want. Oh, and by the way, you're partnered with two you know, nine-figure millionaires at the same time in five years. You're like, in five years? What, who, who am I, Elon Musk? Like, how am I going to do that all in five years, right? Like, but that's what happened in five years for me, just by by honestly, hearing my authentic voice, which is layered over by, by conditioning and years of the right way. And you should, you shouldn't, right. But that authentic voice pops up. And when you hear it and grab it, that first kind of like inkling of what, what you want to do and how you want to do it, man, you start following that and things just start popping and unlocking. And it's unbelievable how much, how much progress you can make. I mean, even if I were to, if I were to take one of those five years individually, there was just exponential growth. Um, from just learning that, like, all right, I got to be me. I got to follow who I am truly uh, in order to get to where I want to be. So yeah, no, it's amazing how much you can compress time uh, if you're intentional with what you want, listening to yourself and getting around the right people, for sure. Man, that's so good. That And that leads me perfectly into my next question, which is what's one thing that you'd want to tell someone who's maybe working towards financial freedom? Financial freedom uh, can sound big. It can sound heavy. Right. It's like, oh my God, I have, I make X, especially if you're a high earning W2 type person, right? I make 200 grand a year. I got to replace 200 grand a year. I would tell you to make that sound, to make that feel a little bit less, maybe uh, heavy. One, I would pivot first to lifestyle freedom. And what I mean by that is financial freedom will come faster. Anything will come faster when you are in a great place, when you are aligned, universe is aligned with what you're trying to do, right? So if you're looking at life as, okay, I've got to grind out with what I'm doing right now and get to 200,000 in passive income before I can quit, go for it. You can do it. Absolutely. You can do it in any timeline that you want to, but that might feel heavy for a lot of people. So what I would say is, can you design what's, what, what do you want financial freedom for? Like, what's the why? Why do you want to be financially free? What does that look like? What's that vision? We teach this in Emerge, which we'll talk about, but what's the vision of your, of your life? And it could be anything from, I want to travel to, I want to live six months a year in warm weather and six months in cold. We're talking about it snowing in April here, right? Like, I want to do that. Or I want to own a plane. I want to own my own jet, whatever it is, whatever it is you vision, envision your life to be, start designing your life now for that. And that could be, maybe you change jobs in the, in the meantime, right? Maybe you make a little bit less or the same amount, but you do a job that gives you flexibility. Like you don't have right now with your current job. Maybe you even take a step back. I've advocated this. Like people get lost in their title. They're holding on to it. Like, but no, I'm important because I'm this, but there might be a job, a step down and over that is like perfect for you, who you are, what you do, all of that stuff. And being in that job will make you feel filled up. It'll fill your cup. And that will get you closer to the financial freedom you desire just by being in alignment with your authenticity. So I would tell people, chunk, you know, have the vision of what financial freedom does and try to design your life today for that as best you possibly can, whatever that is. It is doable. Absolutely. The second thing I would say is the decisions that you make along the way to financial freedom for me for me, they were always sort of uh, laced with a sense of like regret, like, man, if I could tell my 22-year-old self, man, if I could just go back and tell 20-year-old me, because how, how simple was life then, right? As a, as a 40-year-old guy, I got two kids, a wife who'd stay at home, a mortgage. It's just, it's too complex now. But if I could go back to 20-year-old me, but you can't. However, if you look forward at these points where you're getting wobbly, at these points where you're saying, man, I, I don't know if I'm capable of this. I don't know if I should be doing this. Am I taking too big a risk? Why am I even trying to, why am I even taking these risks to become financially free? And you look forward to the person that only you knows, which is an 80 or 90 or 95 year old version of you or the 95 year old version of you and ask that person what you should do or ask that person their advice. They would say to you, just like you would to your 22 year old self, man, your life is simple. What do you have? You have a wife, couple kids at home, a mortgage, who cares? Man? Like I'm about to die. My life is over. That's complex. That's hard. I get one little, one little 90 year old stint in the, in the millions and billions of years of existence 
to do what I do. And I'm at the end of it. And so I never saw my 90 year old self saying to me when I got wobbly and I was thinking like, oh my God, I'm throwing away this job that makes a few hundred grand a year plus equity. I never, ever could feel my 90 year old self going, Hey man, look, I wish that you would have just grinded it out 40 year old Jamie at that job and stayed, stayed unhappy. Like, like we talked about, yeah, you could have liked it, but you know, you would have just, you would have been okay. It would have been a nice, normal, easy existence. And you retire at 60 or 65. I wish you would have done that. I just can't picture 90 year old me saying that, but for sure I could hear him saying, dude, go, you're 40, go do what makes you feel great. Makes us feel great. Right? Like, live into what you think your true purpose is. I guarantee you, you're going to be way more fulfilled at the point that you reach me, which is hear me now at 95 years old, about to die. If you do that, there was no scenario where I could hear 95 year old me telling me to play it safe, stay small, you know, tuck and run, stay in a like position and, uh, and don't try to like, let your light shine, if that makes sense. So those are two things I would say is, you know, I would uh, aim toward lifestyle freedom, know what your vision is, aim toward that. Now you can achieve that way sooner than you think. And when you do that, man, the, the financial freedom comes with it much, much faster because you're, you're, there's, your energy is aligned. And second, when you're getting a little bit like, ah, is this the right thing or whatever? Just ask 90 year old you what you should do. And I guarantee you, you'll have the answer. Man, that is so good. That whole asking your 90 year old self, you know, what you should do today as, you know, a 30, 40, 35 year old, 50 year old, even yeah. 80 year old, right? Like whatever man, it is. That's so, that's so gold because so often I do that where I look back and I'm like, man, if I could have only told 21 year old Jordy, do this, yeah. right? Yet I can't change that. What I can do is change today. I can change the here and now, right? So by, you know, forecasting or, you know, having that vision of myself, what would 90 year old Jordy tell that's gold? Well, man. because look at 21 or 22, you couldn't be told why, yeah. because you're, you're in it. No, no, I can't. I can't just go, you know, throw caution to the wind and drive across the country. I got college bills to pay, or I got, I got, you know, my, my family's counting on me, or, you know, I want to settle down and I want to get married and have kids. Like I've got a vision for my life. I, I can't just right. And at 40, if you're like, Oh my God, are you kidding me? You have 40, you're going to be 20, right? At 40, you're still mentally a 20 year old. Like if people knew when they're 20, how young they feel at 40 or 50 or whatever, then they would not be in such a rush. I'm convinced of that. But yeah, you can't be told that at 20, but you feel like at 40 or 35 or whatever, like, ah, I got all this wisdom now. But you're not thinking about the fact that as you were at 20, couldn't be told, you still can't be told at 40 years old unless you flip it and look forward. And because I guarantee you, when people do that and you just imagine I'm almost dead, I'm 90, 95, like it's not hard to do. I can't even explain how to like it'll happen for you. you'll know exactly. It'll be like in an instant, you'll know exactly what you should do. I guarantee it. Give it a shot. Yeah, I'll have to. That That's phenomenal. <laughs> well, so let, let's talk about Emerge real quick. You, you mentioned sure. it before. Um, tell us what, what's Emerge? Uh, why did you? Yeah, let, talk about it. You talk about alignment, right? So I start in real estate. I start buying real estate. I find GoBundance and I say, okay, great. There's a group of amazing entrepreneurs that I'm getting around. And then I learn more about me. Like real estate's the vehicle, but do I love uh, operations. Do I love all the things in real estate? No, but I love what real estate does for me. No doubt. I love investing in it. I don't know of a, a better thing to put my money in buying real estate. It's the smartest thing in the world, in my opinion. But what I did find out about myself in that space was I, I started a meetup group here in Michigan. And I loved it. I loved going to those meetups and, you know, kicking off uh, the event, bringing in a speaker, you know, having community, building this sort of group of people that every month would come back. Like, it was amazing to me. Like, wow, you get that much value from coming and hanging at this thing I created. That's amazing. It just, it filled my cup, like I said before. So I got really, really tuned into the idea of I really enjoy community building and, and connecting and influence. And I like speaking. I like all of that stuff. The GoBundance founders say, Hey, look, you know, GoBundance is a million plus in net worth. You got to have in order to be a member, but we want to build like a developmental league. We want to build like a, like a JV team, if you will, for future people that want to get into GoBundance, but we don't have a space for them. So we want you to build a community and partner with us. Would you be into that? And I was like, hell yeah, all day. Because again, that aligned with who I am and what I love. Like I love this community thing for sure. Like that's authentically me. So what I decided to make Emerge and Ascend when we created it were for future millionaires, people that are, you know, most are in real estate at this point, it doesn't have to be, but most people are in some sort of real estate because one of our pillars in GoBundance is horizontal income, passive income, 
I just don't know of a better vehicle for passive income in real estate, truly. Yeah. Like between the tax benefits, the cash flow, the appreciation, and the debt pay down, I just don't know of anything better. It's hard, it's physical. People will always need a place to live. So, with that said, uh, most of these people are there. They're, they, they're attracted to real estate. They love the idea, though, of being around a, a community of people who not only want to be horizontal income uh, earners and financially free, but also be the best version of themselves as husbands or wives, since it's co-ed uh, in their health and everything else. So we built a merge to be uh, a 12-week intensive, a course with a lot of live intervention, interaction with GoBundance members every week, all of that stuff three real objectives. One is to create transformation. You got to create a goal at the beginning of a merge that you're going to meet at the end of it and at the end of the 12 weeks. And we're going to give you all the curriculum, the content, the accountability that you need to get there. Second is proximity. A lot of people that find go abundance. This was me. Maybe it was you. You sort of grow away from your community a little bit. Not in a, not in a bad way. Like, you know, the mother, your father, your sisters, your brothers, your friends, your, your friends, but there's a place that you've gone to that now you can't go to with them. You're, you're uh, not a W-2 employee or you don't want to be, or you're starting to invest in real estate and everybody around you telling you about their uncle Mark who got sued. So you shouldn't invest in real estate because, or you want to get calls at two in the morning, like all those voices coming in, it just gets frustrating and annoying. It's crabs in a barrel right there. They're just kind of dragging you down, wanting, wanting to keep you safe because they know you for who you've been. So we created this for uh, uh, transformation, but also for proximity. So getting around other people who are like-minded, those that I, I, I call like your imagine when crew. Like these are the people who see the future version of you. That's what GoBundance has been for me. So the people in Emerge are there because they're saying, hey, I'm also sort of isolated in my own environment here. And you get to meet up with other people that are feeling that exact same way and bond and grow with them. Exactly what we have in GoBundance plus proximity to GoBundance members. And then third, we use Emerge as a filter. You complete all 12 modules, we'll invite you to Ascend. And Ascend is our annual mastermind, just like GoBundance, just without the million dollar requirement. And we go way deeper there with group coaching, with uh, training every Wednesday on wealth, on, on mindset, on one of, the, one of the pillars of GoBundance, on one sheet review. And we just go, we do a ton in Ascend, but you can't get there. The only way to get to Ascend is to go through Emerge. Uh, but that's what Emerge is, a 12-week course and mastermind designed to help you get unstuck, break through, and find community amongst people that are like-minded to you now in the version of you that you're becoming. Man, so good. It's it and and stepping into a bigger room like an emerge, if you know someone's interested in it, um, you know, we can we can link to it and maybe give them a coupon code or something too. But um just getting around people who are also kind of at the same point is huge. When I joined GoBundance, I felt like all of a sudden, you know, I was in this room full of a bunch of other guys and you know, it's intimidating jumping in. Like I barely met the requirements at that time. Right. And that can be intimidating. Yet I felt like I had met a bunch of me's. I always said like, man, this is a room full of freaks, just like me. Like they're wired like me, you know, we're ADHD, you know, like just tons of stuff all over the place. We're all about doing deals. We're deal junkies. And yet we're all like, Hey, well, we want to go bigger. We want to grow. And it's not for like the accumulation of more stuff. Right. It's because of who I have to become. And I felt like that going through GoBundance and had my brother go through Emerge and he couldn't say better things about it. Like, it's just a phenomenal program that stretches you as a person mentally, physically, emotionally, and gets you to the point where you talking about your bigger goals is normal, right? Because I think in our society, that's unless it's a bigger house and a bigger car, you know, like all this other stuff is like, oh, well, you're being flashy. Oh, well, you know, you're just showing off and, you know, it's not necessarily that way. Maybe for some people it is, and that's fine. Yet just getting around people who are supportive and in the same mindset is huge for so many oh my people. God. It, it's, it's the thing you can't quantify. It's so woo woo to many people, like, but those things that you won't admit to your mom or dad that you really want in life, because, you know, they want to, be, they want you to be practical. Like, you know, they're going to kind of that's sweet, but you're not 16 or 12 anymore. Right? Like, what are you going to really do? You got to, you know, earn a life. You got to take care of your family. Like those voices, man, it, it hurts even saying it, like even mimicking that. But, but when you, when you get away from that and with people who say, no, I, I want to hear your biggest, most audacious, craziest sounding dream. I want to hear what that is because then I want to hold you to it. So when you tell me next quarter or the quarter after that you've got this goal that is 20 lit layers below where you truly want to go, because you've already told me where you want to go. You may not have told your parents or your friends, but you told me where you want to go. Like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to allow you 
to undercut yourself. I'm going to make sure that your goals are aligned with the version of you I know that you want to become. So unfortunately, we don't feel comfortable sharing that big goal. But the moment you do, boom, it's locked in. If you're with the right people, it's locked in and they're going to hold you to that. And they're going to keep pushing you to that. And things are going to align with you around that. And as simple as that sounds, it's worth more money than I've ever spent for me to get around those people where I could admit what it is I truly want out of this life, where I can say what I want to financially or the kind of life I want or, or, you know, a, accumulation of anything that I might want or where I want to go or how I want to live or what I want to be. All of that I can share with people uh, in a community like abundance. And it does, it just, it just creates a level that you are afraid to go to typically amongst regular friends, maybe one or two, but you kind of, kind of in the, in the shadows, whisper it. But when you can walk into a room with, in our case, 700 guys and shout from the rooftops that this is what I want to be. And they're like, cool, let's do it. <laughs> how do we get you there? Right. That right. just, like it's nothing. It just makes it possible. And that possibility is worth more money than I've ever spent on GoBundance or anything for that matter. Oh, oh, totally. And, and it's it's that whole community mindset, right? Where like I there's conversations I have in GoBundance with other guys that I would never have with neighbors. Not that there's anything wrong with my neighbors. Someone will probably listen to the podcast. It's just a different mindset. It's it's like, you know, if, if I'm sitting in a pew at church and you know, like we're we're there for that, right? I'm not gonna sit there and talk about money or you know, other stuff. We're goals and everything that we've got going in our lives yet go abundance is kind of geared towards that whole life millionaire and, and helping people, you know, through the ascend program, help people get there yep. is man, it's huge. Just getting around those people can change your life, can change the direction of your life. And man, I, I can't say enough good things about the Emerge and Ascend program. No, I appreciate that, man. No, it means a lot. It's, it's, it's really my, my passion at this point, kind of my life's work, if you will. Like real estate is the savings account to some extent, you know, like it builds wealth, it, yeah. it builds cash flow. But the stuff I love doing is within these communities for sure. Well, but that's what, that's what makes a real difference in people's lives, right? Mm -hmm. Like I, um, I came and spoke to the Emerge group. Uh, yeah. It was probably a year ago. It was a while ago now. I was going to say that was a bit ago, but yeah, we'll have to have you back. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime. Um, and the cool thing is like, I connected with some of these guys, you know, they have me on Facebook or Instagram and, you know, I, I kind of get to be the fly on the wall that sees them inputting this stuff into their life. And all of a sudden, you know, they're, they're posting, they're buying rental properties and they're growing their business and they're doing all this cool stuff that, you know, they probably would have been held back had they, you know, talked with other people that were in a similar situation yet, because, you know, you can get in a room with people like this where, you know, I mean, we're not neighbors, right? So we can, we can help each other out in different ways than we would like, there's no fear of judgment or anything like that. So yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool. Uh, and yeah. definitely life-changing. And, and that's the stuff that I think the 90 year old Jamie would say, dude, go make an impact. I'm sure Tony Robbins 20, 30 years ago, you know, had that idea where it's all about impacting people and he cares at such a deep level you know the 90 year old version of all of ourselves i'm sure would say look money doesn't matter like how many doors you own doesn't matter you know if you drive a ferrari or a ford it doesn't matter right like the relationships and impact that we make in life that's what matters thousand percent and even to that point uh, Tony Robbins has a quote, if you want to make a million dollars, like if that is, you know, he's just, for some reason you want to make a million dollars. And when people put that as the number one thing, I agree with you. It's like, ah, but he says it, if you want to make a million dollars, serve a million people. So if you can, if you can change a million lives or serve a million people authentically, not trying to like, okay, I served you, where's my dollar. But if you just go out there with the idea of service to your point, how much you make Ferrari, Ford, whatever, it's irrelevant because it's all attainable stuff because you're aligned uh, with who you are and you're serving others with that gift. It's this, I just did a post about, you know, you ever heard of ikigai? You ever heard no. that phrase? So it's uh -huh. a Japanese phrase for your reason for being. It's essentially purpose. And there's a model around it. I won't remember all of it, but it's like uh, when you, if you can picture like in the middle is the intersection of four circles. So, in, and that's your ikigai, your purpose, but it's like uh, what you love, um, what you love to do, um, what you can make money doing, Oh, there's two others. So it's like what you love to do, what you can make money doing. Um, and I forget the other two, but anyway, you do all, you kind of like yeah. whatever it is that you love doing that you can make money doing. Oh, that serves others uh, and something else. Like these four things, like you find that thing, that's your icky guy. That's your purpose. And you'll make, you'll, you'll have all the results you want. 
But if you're, if you're focused in on exactly why you were born, the reason for being, your reason for being here, if you do that, if you lean into that and just every day is like, I mean, I, I can't tell you, my wife says like, the less I push in this life, the more money I tend to make. I don't know if that makes any sense. Mm. In my corporate life, the less I push, the less I was, you know, appearing to work, though, therefore, the less likely I was going to be promoted, right? It was sort of this, I could do this job in eight hours this week, but I got to find a way to stretch to 40 and look really busy and all of that, because that's what's valued, the, the time and effort and all of that stuff, no matter what it is. But in this world, when I push, things don't go as well. Like when I just surrender to the idea that, Hey, I'm just going to help this person today. I'm going to jump on this call. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Not like, you know, you have to be somewhat intentional. I'm not saying you could just like float around and money's going to come to you. But when you're in the lane of doing what you're purposefully meant to do and you're not pushing and you're just allowing things, opportunities, and therefore money and all the, all the things that you think you have to push for come to you. It's, it's the craziest, weirdest thing, but and again, it's very woo woo, but it's true. There's a lot of truth in it. It's, it's, you attract, you attract things when you are fully aligned, 100% committed to being you not 99.9, but 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to that point, everyone, they have a different tribe. They gravitate towards something different, right? Yeah. So man, that's, that's awesome. Well, Let's get this wrapped up. I want to be sensitive to your time. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah. Knowing what you know now, what would you have done differently on your journey to financial freedom? Oh man, I would say nothing is the answer to that. My, um, my, and, and I, I say that because I really truly believe that, uh, that wherever we are is where we're meant to be. Mm -hmm. So, you know, do I wish when I see a 25 year old worth, you know, I, you know, I think of like Matt on right? He's in, he's in our, our group. I, you know, whatever he's worth a hundred and some million dollars at this point. I don't even know what he's doing to me. I don't know how he's doing it, whatever, but he's just a 32 year old guy that, that figured out from his perspective, like, Oh, I can accomplish whatever I want to. And he's going for it. Uh, Ryan Stenberg, Will, Will Brown, like these young folks that seem to figure out, I mean, I'm, I'm interviewing, I'm, I'm just reading up on him. Ryan Serhant, the guy that's speaking in Miami. Um, and just like him, he kind of like fell into at some point exactly what he should be doing. He wanted to be an actor. He became a realtor and then laid in the, the what he loves about acting into that career, right? He's on Bravo. He's got this show, all that stuff. Do I wonder what could have been if I figured this stuff out earlier than 40? Uh, sure. But honestly, uh, Jake Harris, a uh, GoBundance guy, said this to me, and it, it resonates. I hear it all the time. Like, I don't want to compare my chapter 12 to somebody else's chapter 15, right? Like, this is when I was meant to figure this out before that. I, I don't know if I would have been capable of, if I would have had the ability, maybe I would have had more pain, who knows, but this is when I'm meant to figure out whatever it is I'm meant to figure out. So I wouldn't, I honestly wouldn't change a thing. I know that's a bit of a cop-out answer, but I wouldn't change a thing. I think we're meant to have and be what we are when we're meant to be there. Yeah, no, man. And that that's perfect, right? Just uh, the one thing I'm going to take from that, if, if, you know, maybe reframing your answer is okay with you is yeah. just enjoy the journey where you're at. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. dude, I totally agree. Be like, we are here in this moment in time for a reason, find the reason here. Don't yeah. dwell on the past. Don't dwell on the future because yeah. we can do all that, all we want, but the only thing we can change is this moment in time and our actions. 100%. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. The, the journey is the is the result. The journey is the reward. It's not something you attain. Everything I attained was fun for a minute. But the steps to get there are the memories, the steps to get there are the things that feel great, right? Like all these things that I did or didn't do or whatever, like that's the true joy. So no, I completely agree with you 100%. Yeah, yeah that's so good. Cool. Well, Jamie, do you by chance have a discount code? Or do you want us to put it in the yeah. show notes for emerge? Yeah. So go to uh, www.goabundanceemerge.com. If you put it's $19.95 to purchase Emerge, $1,995. If you put in my name, Jamie, J-A-M-I-E, all caps, you'll get $500 off. Uh, so it'll be $14.95 to, to join in. We launch every month, the first Monday of the month. So whenever this releases, you know, uh, whenever you, if somebody decides to buy and join us, uh, you would launch the following Monday. And um, yeah, we'd love to have you in there. Fantastic. Cool. Well, thank you for your time. I appreciate all of your wisdom and knowledge that you've given the people here. And dude, it's been really cool to be a fly on the wall of, you know, Jamie's life and seeing you guys take months at a time off in 
you know, yeah. what is it Costa Rica or uh, Dominican? Yeah, Dominican, we did the Dominican Republic. for a month and we're moving, spoiler, we're moving there in August for a year at least. So oh, I think I told sweet. you that. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the plan. Yeah. Good for you guys. Well, that's why we go towards financial freedom, right? So we can yeah. make those choices and options and live our life how we want. So 100%. with that, we're going to sign off. Thank you. Yeah. We'll see ya. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Financially Free Investor. If you found value in this episode or know someone who would find value in this information, please share with them, subscribe, and send us a review.